Okay, we're back, and uh, still sitting at uh, Honolulu Police Department. We've uh, barricaded the front entrance of the metal detector of HPD. Uh, we have people camping out there with tents and outside here, and just on the floor. And <laughs> we have occupied inside HPD. Uh, demanding that Trish Morikawa, the head of uh, uh, the housing committee and for the houseless, and Wesley Chun, the, head, the director of the Department of Facility Maintenance, be arrested for crimes of theft on Occupy Honolulu and the houseless at Ward and Baratania today. Uh, we have now been here for... 12 hours. 12 hours and 20 minutes inside HPD. <laughs> I think, I don't know, I think, I don't know, I, no one said anything, but I think we're the only ones that's ever thrown a tent up in the, in uh, HPD. Yeah. Or the only ones that's thrown a tent up in a police department. <laughs> <Occupied>. Anywhere. <laughs> occupied life. <laughs> yep, this is how we occupy. <laughs> <laughs> Wes and Trish have got to go. Hella, hella occupy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if my social media is working again. Oh, jeez. It's not even pulling anything up. Where's the chat? There we go. Thank you very much for retweeting that we're back on air. Uh, Ustream only allows so many hours from uh, what I gather. And, uh, well, no, they're, we're definitely on. People are jumping on. We got acknowledgement that we're back on air. Um, let's see. Uh, Wow, a lot was talked about. Let's see. Good morning, revolting slaves. <laughs> well, I guess that's a true statement. We're revolting slaves. I don't know. I don't think we're slaves, but we're trying not to be, at least. As much as we can in this enslaving uh, economic system that we're in. But uh, anyhow... <clears throat> Carl, Carl said that the houses are like rat infestations inside of Grandma's <laughs> joke. Yep. Yeah, he definitely did uh, during a mayor debate. Or I, was it during the mayor debate? I don't know, but somewhere uh, uh, he was uh, stating that he believes that the houseless, uh, basically the poor of Hawaii, is nothing but rats and that they need to be dealt with. And his way of dealing with them was said. Uh, to bulldoze over them. That's our mayor. That's how our mayor talks to its community, to its citizens that uh, vote for him and pay taxes and uh, expect him to rep represent his people uh, humanely and sane. I don't see that very sane during an election time to sit there and tell your citizens that you want to run them over with a bulldozer uh, and call them rats. I, I don't get that. <coughs> And, uh, blah, 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 where are we? Yes, 37% of the houseless on this island, on this island is, in fact, Hawaiian, native Hawaiians. That in itself, you know, when you have bishop estates and other things that is seen to hold funds and lands that is accessible for the Hawaiians, what are they doing on the streets? Why is there such a freaking multi-year waiting list for people to be able to get on homestead lands They have a right to those homestead lands? It makes no sense. They're, they're making sure they have houseless. 
and they're not doing anything that they can to alleviate these problems. Specifically prosecuted, he was a city prosecutor before, yes. Yes, he is doing a reset. Pineapple glitch is back on. Yes, we are back on. Uh, yeah, there are pics of city workers taking stuff. Yeah, there's more than pics of city workers taking stuff. I got pics on my. If you guys want uh, pictures of some of the events that's happened, you can go to facebook.com. Uh, forward slash revolution nova same spelling as what we have here for the pineapple glitch and uh, go through uh, the occupy pictures and you'll see several pictures of many of the what 36 plus raids that we've had and uh, well actually 36 plus confiscation raids because we've had like over 38 tagging raids along with it so you know we're hitting 70 something total raids into our camp <laughs> over 278 days of our encampment. Uh, okay, where am I? I'm not sure where you are. Uh, you are now on the Revolution Nova's uh, pineapple glitch. Uh, Ustream channel uh, watching Honolulu Police De as we do an occupation at Honolulu Police Department. We've barricaded the front entrance into the police department and we have tents set up uh, inside and outside. And uh, we have uh, completely gone inside and in we're occupying the inside of uh, HPD asking for them to finish the job and arrest two cabinet members that has uh, knowingly illegally stole items from the houseless in Occupy Honolulu. We're asking for them to either turn themselves in or for the police to actually just go after them and arrest them for criminal activity. Sign up with live stream? No, sorry, this isn't a live stream. This is a Ustream channel. <clears throat> um, yeah, you just go to Ustream and type in Revolution Nova or type in the pineapple glitch and you'll come straight to my channel. When I return, bringing crossbows and rat terrier dogs, and will be contact contract working to kill rats. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, they're definitely doing something uh, because you know they're, they're they're definitely dealing with this, trying to figure out what to do with it until you see the inside. Bulldoze and huh, nice people have not evolved. Here.
Yeah. Um, have you posted the picture of uh, our tents inside HPD? Uh, people are asking to see that. Are you able to put a link to that on uh, my Ustream so they can see this? Okay, uh, Andrew is going to try and repost a link to the picture of the tents inside HPD and uh, possibly retweet a little bit more so we can get this information out and get some more people uh, seeing what's going on. I'm going to come on in here. <clears throat> <laughs> Daniel's still asleep, and uh, this is where we're uh, sitting at. <sighs> Refuse and resist. It's an entrance into HPD, and uh, we're not allowing anything to go on until uh, they meet our demands. And it's not hard. You steal a Twinkie, you get arrested. But if you beat and steal on the house list, well, then I guess you get to run around. I don't know. We're asking for them to do the same justice as what they do for people that steal tw Twinkies. <laughs> it's not a hard uh, thing to do. Yes, exactly. It is a, a threat to personal safety. Um, Trish Morikawa, the head of the housing department for the houseless, has actually uh, stated that to help the homeless, she needs to put them in crisis. Um, I mean, think of that very statement, and you had the Spanish Inquisition. How are you going to help people by putting them in crisis? Uh, we, we constantly see how, how they run around and steal their medications, that these people, they're very survival for heart conditions and, you know, mental st stability. They steal their medications. And, uh, you know, th their, their very acts is just showing that they just want to leave them there to die. They don't want to give them anything that they need to survive on. They, their answer to it is, uh, well, go to a shelter. But there's 6,000 people on this island that's houseless, 2,000 beds in a shelter. That means 4,000 people with nowhere to go. So 4,000 people are on the streets daily getting beaten and stolen from, have their medication stolen, food, uh, toiletries, uh, anything and everything, their clothing, tents, whatever they need to be able to survive is stolen from them daily. We have third world entities all over Hawaii. People think of Hawaii as the vacation spot of the world, but when you drive through the vacation spot of the world outside of Honolulu and Waikiki, what do you see? Third world communities all around that are uh, amongst millionaires. So you, you gotta figure, you gotta wonder what the hell's going on with that. When you have millionaires all over the place and here these people are living in tents and getting beaten on. <laughs> Exactly. Putting people in crisis right up HPD's alley. And they are the front people. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, the question was is uh, how are they allowing us to do this? Well, it's, it's kind of, you know, you can look at most cities where their police go on the defensive as soon as someone walks up to them, or you can sit there and say, here in the Aloha State, we have that for a reason. The culture here allows not to be offensive right off the bat. At least try to find out and understand what's going on before you jump to a conclusion. They have pre-knowledge that they know for a fact that Trish Morikawa and Wesley Chun broke the law today. They have full knowledge and understanding of why we are here. We are justi justifiably here. They say that, they're, that the way they have to deal with this situation uh, calls for other means than just walking up and arresting them. 
I say they're still citizens, regardless of what level they are within the city. They're still citizens, and citizens need to be arrested when they break the law. So go down there and arrest them. They're not hard to find. These people have offices. They have to be there at that office. So you drive there, arrest them. Or simply put, Mayor Carlisle can say, hey, you guys need to turn yourselves in. But since he hired them and said, no, I want you to beat and steal from people, you know, with your law degrees and your civil engineering degrees, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an interesting deal. So HPD has kind of, kind of said, okay, well, they're making a statement and they have reason. The culture says, hey, you know, we're not here to fight. You know, they understand their position. They understand our position. We are all part of the 99%. As for sleeping, me and Andy have uh, nobody to relieve us here right now because everybody else is asleep. So we're just going to kind of just stick it out here. It's uh, 4 a.m. We are now 12 hours and 30 minutes into being inside HPD and uh, blockading their entrance. And uh, yeah, we're still waiting. It's exactly right, no one is above the law. But as you see, they still do what they want to do. Question on here: Does Global have have this? Oh, uh, are we talking about Global Rev Live? Uh, they did actually for a while there. Um, last report we seen that it was down. Um, we're not sure what's going on with that. We had uh, O W N N Global Rev Live and uh, Occu. What was it? Occu P. Huh? Uh, we had a we had a few different channels that was up reposting this, and uh, but from what we saw last, most of them are down right now. It is uh, 4:06 a.m. The offices will be opening up at 8 a.m. So I'm expecting at 8, 8 a.m. someone goes on out there and starts arresting some people. <laughs> Thank you very much for mirroring it. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. This is forever long. <laughs> I really did not expect them to let this go on for this long. <laughs> I've never used stream this for, for this long. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my brain is frying. Yeah, this is when you gotta love that unlimited AT and T data. Yeah, they're throttling the hell out of me right now. It's playing hell, but hey, it keeps going, right? Good morning. 
Yeah, it's uh, four hours until the office is open. So, I mean, they should be arresting him now, right? I mean, seriously, they don't need to be waiting for offices. They know where they live. We know where they live. We can just start popping tents up in their own front yards, but whatever. They think they don't. I don't know. I, I think they really think we're stupid or something. I, <laughs> <laughs> I've been in and out of the, you know, their neighborhoods. I don't know how often now, but uh, anyhow, um, what is that? Uh, September seventeenth. There is a lot of plans that's going on for September seventeenth. Uh, I think our group is uh, right now saying hush, hush on it. But yes, definitely, we have uh, a lot of plans, and uh, we're doing a. Uh, a lot of preparing for it. We got some uh, big stuff ready for it. So yeah, we're at uh, uh, day 278 with Occupy Honolulu, uh, the world's longest Occupy encampment, <laughs> sitting in the middle of HPD, blocking their front entrance. We have it barricaded with the sign that you see, and uh, their uh, metal detector, and um, we have tents popped up inside and outside. And uh, we are staying here until they are arrested. Uh, Trish Morikawa and Wesley Chun are arrested. <laughs> yeah, expedited them to New York so Bloomberg can use them. Yeah, no, actually, you know, here's a tidbit of information. Here in Honolulu, they actually asked for the help of Chicago teachers and uh, asked for the help of the U New York PD. Uh, they've been here a few times, especially the New York PD, to try and get us out of here, and we refuse to leave. <laughs> So yeah, the people in New York, we know your officers, we've seen them, they come here. <laughs> they hang out and do their little fronts. And their shitty ass Hawaiian aloha shirt. Yeah, they, they come in with their uh, really touristy uh, Hawaiian aloha shirts that don't really match a real aloha shirt. <laughs> so they're really easy picked out and they always have to have something to brag on them about what PD they're for. And uh, they gave them a game plan on how to deal with us, and they would sit there, and they found out that we still don't leave, that they could do whatever they want. We're still staying here, and we will never leave uh, Thomas Square. And, like, currently right now, we still have people at Thomas Square. We're, we're uh, deoccupy Honolulu for a while, uh, for a reason. And uh, we plan to stay there until these injustices are fixed. And uh, currently, one of the injustices we're after is uh, Trish Morikawa and Wesley Chun. Uh, the uh, yeah, um, the mayor had the Chicago uh, teachers come by oh, for wow. information on us. And yeah. they actually had... Yes, yeah, so are we. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, Northside Cabrini Green. Uh, the, he was. We were in. Uh, we were in uh, Northwest Indiana at Laporte in the Chicago land area. We've lived all around there. Uh, Bolingbrook, uh, Naperville, Lyle, Woodridge. It depends. You know, we've been living all over the place out there. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but no, they took in uh, sent NYPD after us a couple times here because they couldn't handle us and they didn't know how to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sad, right? You know, they see the big actions that they do out there in, uh, you know, New York, so they figured, oh, those guys know what to do. So they came out here to do the same thing, and they found out that we don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> right.
Right. Exactly, what, right? You said he's beating up the house. What, what exactly? They, they created... Here, you want to hold this one in? Yeah. So I can talk to this dude. Oh. Hey, Chris, it's no better Yeah. But uh, basically what it is, is they created a bill, uh, Tulsa Gamer, uh, she's a city council member, she created a bill called Bill 54, once it passed it became 11-029. Uh, and what that is, is uh, the storing of private property on public grounds. Uh, if you take anything like your bag, you're sitting in a park with it, they don't like you. Well, they're going to attack that bag. But say you're a school member, right, and that bag holds your computer. And you come back and use your computer in the park because it's the only place you can peace and quiet to do your homework. Right. And they see you with that computer there. Yeah. They take it from you. So this is what they're doing with the houses? Or yes, they're running up to the houses and stealing all their items that they have throughout the island. They're stealing medication, they're stealing clothing, they're stealing food, they're stealing tents, they're stealing care packs? Or, or this, this, uh, they're, they're stealing, it doesn't matter if they're working class or whatever they are, they're houseless. They have a war against the houses, a war against the poor here in Hawaii. And they're, they're literally coming up, and when I say they're beating on them, we've had several instances where they come into our camp with violence, they come into other camps of the houses, we've watched them kick people in the head, you see them, you know, HPD and uh, Department of Facility Maintenance. The Department of Facility Maintenance on this island actually has more power than the police department. There's street repairment. Street repairman has more authority over the police department on this island. That makes no sense. What does the street repairman have the right to take someone's belongings, right? Are they, they are, were they given some kind of appointment or did they get some kind of training that makes them all knowledgeable in law? No. Not here to serve. Yeah, exactly. They're not there for nothing besides to fill a pothole, which they still can't do because they're spending it all on rent. <laughs> My question is what, so people are. Losing their houses, right? The, the crisis, right? And then you're living there per se, and it's, it's, you're not supposed to, right? And then they come in and take your stuff and remove you from the property. Oh, that's what they're trying to do, yeah. And they're giving no means. See, they say uh, the means is to go to the shelters, okay? Mm -hmm. The shelters here in Hawaii devices of, say, 500 uh, mats that are on the floor, right. 500 people in one room. Living right, yeah, living right next to each other. You have people stealing from each other. You have violence that's going on in there. You have people that's either on drugs or alcohol. People with mental instability. Uh, people with health problems. You have all these issues going on. That's on these floors. 500 people that's in distress, and they believe that, that that's a humane way to treat people. People that are in distress and caging them in a cage for 500 people in one room and they expect everything to be correct. But then you say, well, at least they're getting them off the street, right? Because there's 6,000 people on the island without a home. That's without a home or a house. Or a and then there's 2,000 beds that are available. That means 4,000 people, no matter what, has no choice but to be on the street. And so they create Bill 54 because the citizens ask for them to acknowledge this problem and do something about it. That they need to engage with it and solve this issue. Tulsi Gabbard, the one that's running for uh, uh, Congress right now, she says that the ultimate answer was to create Bill 54, which allows them the, the authority for street department individuals to run around the island and beat and steal from the houses. Trish Morikawa, the one that is in charge of the house the, for the housing department for the house, is kickback. Well, you know, she actually it gives you out, so I can. Well, you know, she actually got, she's actually been documented saying, in quotes, I hope the homeless by putting them in crisis. Okay, so that, how does that help anything? So, so when we go to Kiao and there's 200 plus people that's sitting there, and they actually bulldoze through those camps where people had livestock, they had food growing, they had their homes, their children, all these things that's been going on for decades. They bulldoze through, kick their kids out of school, beat on some of them, steal their items, and don't offer them a single place to go. It's Kiao, what is that? Kiao is out in uh, uh, Makaha, uh, going towards the west side. It's just a big farm? Or no, it's a big beach area. It's a, big, 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 a huge beach area where the surfers and everybody enjoys the beaches. So what they actually did is they made it private, or government property, and now no one's allowed to use this beach. Even the surfers. So now the surfers are arguing about how are they going to use this? And they're wanting to charge the surfers to use the beach. 
This is why. How are you going to charge people to use the beach? What are you talking about, right? So they're trying to make money off of the people that's here on this island. They're trying, ah, they're dude, trying to you're off to arrest West and Trish, correct? They're, they're, no, they're not yet. So they can okay. Be more profitable by by taking over all the beaches and taking it from the locals, so nobody is able to fish. They're now wanting to impose a $200 uh, uh, fee to be allowed to fish on the beaches. So we were all us homeless eating in all these places. No, no, no. How many people is actually trying to survive by eating that fish? And how does that make you money? You don't see the money. I can pull out my ATE card and I'm getting $700 a month. Where does that come from? Okay, so where does it go? What is it? When when does it stop? Oh, so so you're you're appreciative of being able to get a card instead of being able to find a means where you can live in a house or be able to. No, you're right. Or be able to have dignity and privacy and not be treated inhumanely by having, having to worry about an officer coming up and beating you and stealing your stuff. All because you get an EBT card? Does yeah, that make sense? The fishing. Well, no, 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 no. It, it's, it, it, all of it has to be compass. You can't take out one thing. Well, about the fishing thing, they, 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 they give me food. $200 thing, and that's not that that they have to generate money. It's well, no, no, that's not what they're using it for, though. They're not using it to help the houseless. That money doesn't go to the houseless. That's, that's taking the fundamental reason of why Hawaii is so nice. They're taking local lands, Hawaiian lands, and taking it from them and saying, we're not going to make you pay to fish on your land. And we're going to make you pay to be able to survive. We're going to make you pay so we get richer and we pay for projects like the rail that has nothing to do with saving our farmlands that they've abolished on this island, that they're creating more projects on, that they're doing all this atrocities on. They're funding people to beat on you and steal your stuff. So your EBT card doesn't help you. There's a means for you to be able to survive. And that means is by taking over the way the government is running and making it run directly for its citizens. You are a member of the society. You're not some lone ranger sitting out there and wanting to just live off the system and tell everybody screw it off and just go around beating off people, right? And stealing. Otherwise, you'd be in jail. You're a member of society. And you should not be segregated from society because the government here says, screw you, you don't make enough money, right? So don't look at your EBT and don't be grateful because what you're saying is what happened in China. When China sat there and said, okay, here we go, we're going to repress you and repress you and repress you and repress you, but then we're going to lighten up some and say, we'll give you this. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. No. No. You are a member of society. You deserve better. You are a human being. Don't be gracious enough to say thank you for giving me a card when they give you nothing else and you have to be afraid for your life every day you wake up. Simple job training or job location can solve a lot of the problem. Simple. Something that's so simple that all they have to do is wake up and say, hey, we're going to open up the paper or turn our computer and say, you know what? This gentleman's able to fit this job right here. It pays this much money. And I know the perfect place that you can afford on this income reliably, not by sitting there straining to make it. This is more than affordable with this way. Let's just get him in it. Let's, let's offer a program that will help him out in getting in there, receive the job training through the company, and provide him a home that the city doesn't even have to pay for. Wow, really? Uh, so, uh, so I was. Yeah, well, see, the, there's no handout. It was an offer of a hand up. Oh, it's help. That's what we're advocating for. Right? It's possible. Yep. How about the excuse? Uh, All right. Yep. Check us out. We're on Warren Baratini every day. I got up to give me more spirits and I hope I find Well, you're on Maritain right now. Just straight down, one block down. That's where we hold the camp. We've been there for 278 days now. We're the world's longest occupied camp. There's a. I passed it on the way here? Yeah. Yeah, straight down this road. Right now, there's only one tent set up because most of our guys are set up here and they're doing actions to help uh, keep this going. We have a lot of people that's dealing with the video.
know a lot of people are dealing with the uh, social network trying to get the information out, so you don't see the huge encampment going on. But usually there's a lot of things. The movie but, right uh, there. Uh, all right, I'm coming through Chinatown. Fast through Chinatown. Well, what? Chinatown. Yeah. Oh, oh, one oh that's why I didn't pass okay. that. Yeah, it's one block this way. As soon as you get by the gas station, look across the corner, and you'll see uh, the sign in the tent sitting there. And you can stay there? Oh, yeah. We're there every night. Yeah. Every yeah. night, 24-7. And you have stuff on bread, by the way. Yeah, nice to meet you. And you are? I'm Andy. Andy, nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you as well. You guys have a good day. All right. You have yeah. a good one. Thank you. Oh, gosh. We definitely need reinforcements. I've got to get to sleep. Should I try and use the one in HUD? Message has been brought to you by Trish Morikawa. Say what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what the hell did you? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and see it. Screw you, man. <laughs> no. Uh, it is right now 4.27 a.m. here in Honolulu, and uh, yeah, oh, well, you, if you, <laughs> flat crops in Hawaii, yeah, well, you know the song, uh, they paved paradise, well, that's true, <laughs> they're doing everything they can to pave it. Yeah, outreach is definitely critical. Uh, people need to do that. They need to educate and they need to know how to approach people and just get the message out. And, you know, it's like a TV commercial, right? You know, you can talk for hours, but if you can give it out in 30 seconds and make your point, they definitely listen. currently have HPD standing back outside watching us and uh, so as uh, daylight starts to come they're wanting to look like they're all surrounding us and being all badass I guess I don't know even though throughout the night we've been just like who to who where are they <laughs> so we might have some excitement after all
exactly. How long does it take to arrest criminals? Yeah, this uh, town has spent $750,000 to fight us in 278 days. What could they have done with that money for the houseless community and solved the problem completely? It's insane. I keep telling them, we have no reason for a camp if uh, they solved that problem doesn't mean Occupy dies, it means the camp goes away from uh, Baratania at least, but cause there's definitely more issues that need to be addressed, right? We all know that one. In the Fed. Haha. <laughs> Gotta mention that once in a while. <laughs> Right now we have four of us that's out here, one that's sleeping on the floor, another one that's sleeping in a tent, and then me and iZombie, uh, uh, Andrew there, that's still up and sticking it out, so, yeah, there's just four of us out here right now, the rest of the camp is, uh, dealing with, uh, video editing and trying to get the information out, and sleeping, and, you know, doing their thing. Keep receiving texts. I'm sorry, guys. There's no way for me to answer the texts when uh, the use stream is going. I appreciate the words that I've been seeing on there, but uh, I have no way of being able to answer that back. The Twitter account that I'm currently running is, uh, I have a personal account that I'll be changing out here soon, so it's no use on that one, but uh, the, Occ the Occupy Honolulu, it's at Occupy Honolulu, hashtag OHNL, is uh, 
uh, current Twitter feed that I'm running for the Occupy movement itself. Uh, the average cost. They t we haven't uh, picked out an average cost. Uh, they said that uh, the first 11 raids, which was nowhere near as severe as some of the ones they've been doing after the first uh, after the first 11, first 11 raids actually cost the city uh, upwards of $240,000. And um, like I said, we're up to like raid 36. So times that by three, and then some. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the tent thing is pretty cool, especially the one that's was inside. <laughs> that was a cool sight. <laughs> I, I I I think I don't know. I could be wrong, but I believe we're the only ones that I know of so far that's throwing a tent up in a police department. So you know, take note, try it out. <laughs> it's a fun action, even if it only lasts a few seconds. <laughs> We're in dire need of Mountain Dew and cigarettes. If anybody's awake out there and in the general area, Marble Menthol Box and Mountain Dew will appease us both. <laughs> What are the other... Oh yeah, I'm completely out of something to drink. God dang. Yeah, it has to be in the hundreds of millions of dollars. It's crazy out there. I don't understand why they're spending so much to do nothing. <laughs> this is probably one of the easiest protests that's probably happened, right? I mean, you think about all the major protests for civil rights and everything that was out there. And this is solved easily. A lot of the services are out there. They're just not utilizing. The cash is obviously out there. They just don't feel to spend it for that. This is an easy situation, and uh, that could solve a lot of problems for a lot of people. <laughs> you <He's> joining us. <laughs> How's it? <laughs>
Uh, I don't, you, this action has been going on now for 13 hours. Huh? No, you're fine Nine. yourself. Uh, it's just November 1st. Yeah. You have, uh, November 1st I moved out here, and November 5th the camp started. Did you have a change of venue as well? Pardon? So what? Change of venue. It's a marathon occupation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've been here for thirteen hours now. Got hmm. here at like three thirty to uh demand the arrest of uh Trish Morikow and Wesley Chun. And I don't know, apparently if you're is the director of facility maintenance. Mm. They're the ones that coordinate the seizure of homeless people or houseless people rather. So he's an employee of the city and town? Yeah, he's, he's actually appointed by Carlisle, the mayor. Yeah. It's a cabinet level position. So he was following directions or orders or... Yeah, very much so. This is Carlisle's war on the, uh, the houseless. So, mm. yeah. The orders are coming straight from the top. And you have uh, Trish Morikawa, who is... Do you think that maybe another way of looking at it would be the community is upset, and then the complaints, considering the complaints from the community at large about people camping on the corner there, but being an eyesore, Yeah, so why doesn't the city do something? Yeah. This is the city's response. Hmm? The city's response is they take... They no, take that's, that's criminal. It's criminal. That's criminal. There's humane ways of doing it. Doing it. There's much so easier ways to do it. How, how, do you, how are you going to sit there and say, okay, uh, the citizens are in an uproar and pissed off because it's an eyesore... Mm -hmm and that they want them off the street, and when they ask the city to do something about it, they decide, well, okay, we'll beat and steal from them, even though we can offer them uh, job relocation, job training, and find them affordable housing with the job that they're finding them. Are you alleging police abuse? Yeah, police and DFM. We have it on camera. We actually had one just happen here at this place here, and it's being taken care of, too. So, yeah. It, so how are we going to... How is people going to allow that? That's not what the city actually asked for. The city asked for them to be dealt with. They didn't deal with it by allowing the 4,000 people that have no choice because there isn't 6,000 beds on this island. There's only 2,000. They dealt with it by beating and stealing from them. I don't know how that actually appeases the citizens at all. So, yes, they should be mad about seeing those tents. This is Hawaii. This is a tourist area. They should not be there. But why are they there? It's not because of us. It's not because of the houseless, it's because the city and county refuses to do anything about the problem.
Okay, for, uh, you need to turn that down, man. You got that plane, it's creating, you know. Um, anyhow, uh, it says here, most people, uh, us and, most people, us, the word, or use, okay, most people use the word homeless. Why do you say houseless? Because here in Hawaii, 37% of the individuals that is houseless is actually native Hawaiian. So how are you going to tell them that they don't have a home? Their home is Hawaii. Because, I mean, just because you don't have the funds that's affording a house, does that mean you don't have a home? Do you not find that you're where you're born or where you're from or where you've lived most of your life to be your hometown? That means you have a home. You just don't have the house. That's why we use houseless. It's to give respect to the individuals that's in their place of living this where they need to be it's where they were born they've lived it's where they're native to indigenous to it's their home they just uh, for whatever reason the system has failed them or has fallen out of the system that's created a means where the disconnect of being able to have the house isn't there what do you think this the mayor and the You want to answer him about what store is closest to us? Uh, there's actually a gas station just. Yeah, well, get on there and just text him to him or answer to him. Okay, now what what do I feel the city needs to do? Well, there's several things. Okay, we have Mayor Carlisle now that has gone out of his way to start a rail project, correct? This rail project is being started without permits. That's also an illegal activity. He's not able to do. He's taken the citizens' uh, tax money and federal funds to start a project without permits of authorization to allow him. He doesn't have the permits to start building anything. So, what do you mean from who? From the environmentalists, from all the people that he has to get the paperwork from that says that this is an approved deal. He has torn up farmlands and has made it so, and has just started a project without approval. He has no approval for it. Just like if he was to want to fix the electricity in your house, you need a permit, from the city well the city and county needs approval from the state to be able to do the projects that they do so they don't have that approval so now with this if uh, Cayetano was to become in office he wants to say no to the rail so how do we get rid of it if it's already started well you can end the project and spend millions of dollars and have no rail but then now you have the problem of having to dismantle what was already started and it's on it's over farmlands. It's made us more unsustainable. So what we could do is for the people that want to live off the lands, like the Native Hawaiians, oh, like some of them. The, the Native Hawaiians no. used to live off the land, correct? So why not go out there and allow them a job that would dismantle the uh, the the rail project that wasn't supposed to be there to begin with, while restoring our farmlands? That creates sustainability. And it creates an area that the people that want to live off the land can now live off the land and they have no worries of getting beaten stolen from. The people that has physical and mental health needs, we have services like disability and welfare that, it, that solves those type of issues where they are unable to do anything in them's life. We're not talking about people that want to play a system. We're talking about people that have severe issues that's unable to do it. So why not introduce them into those systems so the citizens don't have to pay excess funds on beating and stealing from them so we at least get them off the street and inhumane and with dignity in mind and allow them the peace of mind to live safely in life. Then you had the people that's a working class. They may not have the they were, may not have the utilities to find an affordable housing with the income that they have. So why doesn't someone open up a freaking newspaper and help them out on locating all these places that they say that the living wage in, in Honolulu is seven twenty five, 
or $8 an hour. Well, I want to see them find an apartment at $7.25 and $8 an hour that is actually affordable and sustainable that they can achieve while still being able to eat and pay for their medical care and everything else. And if they could provide that, you just got the working class now off the streets. And if that's not the problem, then you need to dis discuss how you're going to do job location or job training. Well, it's easy. We have unions that train people. So why not introduce them into a job that pays more, that gets them into more of a living wage of what's actually feasible on this island, so you can find them housing that the citizens don't have to pay for, nor for training, nor for housing, and allow them to live their lives with the peace of mind and knowing that they're doing it on their own and they're not living off the system. I don't advocate for a system that hands out. I advocate for a system that gives a hand up. It's easy. It doesn't cost that much to do this. But they spend three quarters of a million dollars to fight us to tell us that they're unwilling to do that while 4,000 people are getting beaten and stolen from daily. That is a corrupt system. I don't understand that. Uh, can you elaborate on that? that 4, people if there's 6,000 people that's houseless, mm -hmm. 2,000 beds that's available in a shelter, that means 4,000 people is on the streets no matter what they do. There is no other place for them to go. 4,000 people are now subjected to Bill 54. Bill 54 is allowed the means for the police and uh, mm -hmm. Department of Facility Maintenance, which has more power than the police when dealing with those situations, to beat and steal from them. So while you're sitting there on the street and you have heart medication there, they steal your heart medication and then allow you to lay there to die. Hmm. Oh, that reminds me of a friend of mine. He was sitting in a classroom and the instructor asked him, what do you think the uh, solution is for homelessness? And he said, Colt 45, to the back of the head. Okay, well he's probably up there with Mary Carlisle, then, where he calls you, and each of everybody else that's anywhere near the streets, rats, in an infestation, and he wants to run them over with a bulldozer. That is our mayor. Our mayor has directly threatened everybody's lives that's on the street with a bulldozer. Is that what he said? Yes. Uh, Trish Morikawa, which is the house... Yes, he actually said it on TV during a mayor debate. The most publicized thing in Hawaii right now, and he said it straight on TV. That's how he wants to treat it. So then you have... I don't believe that. Well, I don't then, believe that in his heart Peter would harm people. I'm just well, saying. then you need to look it back up. It's very easy. Hawaii actually. News now. Take a look. It's that easy. Not. Look it up. Well, I believe Educate. you said it. Because you told me and I don't doubt your word. Okay, well but then, why would you I say it if you didn't believe it? Well, then why would he show up with a bulldozer at our camp today? He did? Yes. He showed up with a bulldozer? Well, that was a beautiful stunt. Yeah, that was a yeah that's politics. Yeah, well, does it make it right? It's politics. Does it make it right? Does it make it right? That's what I asked. That's well, your election. Does it make it right? No, it doesn't. Is it, do you think that the citizens of the city should have to worry and fear? <laughs> answer that, seriously. Do you think it's right that people have to answer, uh, that have to live in fear? From their politician, their elected day. officials, the people that they want to represent them. Do you think they should live in fear? Of them. Yes. Exactly. So it doesn't make it right. It doesn't matter if it's politics or not. This is humanity. This is your friends, your neighbors, your your wives, your husbands, your children, your neighbors, your your grandparents, your co-workers. Did he drive it down the sidewalk and peel all the Oh yeah, he off? drove all he drove all through up in there. Ah. Yeah. So you could say it's ballsy, but you could say end of career. He's a moron. He's an idiot. He's a menace to society. He wants to spend three quarters of a million fighting us. We don't spend a dime fighting him. And guess what's happening? I bet you he don't get reelected. Yeah, well, he won't be elected here soon, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Gaetano will be elected. Exactly. But you know, I like the idea of the rail. I really like the rail. Talk yeah? To, I like the certain aspects of it. There's right, but does it actually, is it feasible? Huh? Does it, here it's supposed to be to collect money for the for the city, correct? I don't really care about the money. You know, oh, you should. Paper. You should. That's because does paper. it take you into Waikiki where it actually makes it affordable or do you like having your taxes raised because somebody wants to have a ill thought out plan? I think if you can go from, where, where does it begin in it? Eva Beach to Honolulu. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, something like that, yeah. I think that if you can move quickly between those areas. Really? So how's the people from I going to get right. there? How's the, how's the people from Waianae? How's the people from How's the people from Maui going to get there? How's the people from Big Island going to get there? 
How's the people from just North, uh, uh, North Shore going to get there? How are the people from Waikiki going to get there? Because every single one of those individuals throughout the whole state is, sta is dealing with those few little miles that people...